So the world is receiving its power from the power of the Holy Land. All of the world receives its power from the Holy Land. The Holy Land is the heart of the world. And the heart he gives the blood and the power and the oxygen and the life to all of the organs. But the heart is receiving its power from the righteous man that is in the aspect of Yaakov. And on Yaakov Avinu it's written, Titen emet le Yaakov, you will give him the truth. That's what Rabbeinu said in Nikute Moran. But the reason that the Holy Land receives its power from Yaakov is because of the truth of Yaakov. And when Yitzchak, the father of Yaakov, is recognizing Yaakov, so how he recognizes him? How do you know that it's Yaakov? Because of his voice. Hakol kol Yaakov. The voice is the voice of Yaakov. Even when his hands look like the hands of a sav, even that when I look at your actions and I see what you do and you look, you look like a sav, it seems to me that you are like a sav, like your evil brother. But when I hear your voice, oh, now I know it's you. So even when a person finds himself filthy in the lowest place. He looks at his hands, Yadechem Dami Maleu, full of blood, a sinner, a criminal, a murderer, like his brother, Esav. If he would use his voice in the middle of truth, he will say the truth. Like Yaakov, he comes back to be Yaakov and he receives all of the blessings from his father Yitzchak, from the source of happiness, from the Creator Himself. When you talk words of truth that comes out of your mouth, you will be blessed completely. And there will be nothing that separates you anymore from your parents, from the Creator, from Kudsha Brichu and Shechinte. And it's also the aspect of Tfilin, that it's the glory, that it's also the Midah of Yaakov. And this is why Yaakov, he said Shema Israel, like we're obligated to say Shema Israel when we're putting Tfilin, because he was the glory. And the face of Yosef HaTzadik that he spoke about in the last couple of classes. So Yosef HaTzadik, he had the face of Yaakov. He looked like Yaakov. This is why he was his main student, his main child, because he accepted his face, he took his face in, he soaked the wisdom of Yaakov. He loved Yaakov so badly, so much, that he nullified himself to Yaakov. And he got his face. When you go and accept the face of your rabbi, okay? What does it mean that you accepted the face of your rabbi? Now it's yours. If you're now going to walk and look carefully in the mirror, you will see that you have the face of your rabbi. You can recognize by the faces of the students who is their rabbi. And especially if you will look on the faces of the real students, there you will see the face. It's not the side curls or the black hat or the black... It's not that. It's not... It's the wisdom. The face is the wisdom of the person. Chokhmat apanim, the wisdom of the face. You have wisdom in your face. You can see on the face of a person exactly how wise he is. Who is he? What's his wisdom? That's the wisdom of the face. You have the wisdom of the hand. That's the faith of the person. When you look at the hands, you can see the wisdom of the person. If it's defected, if it's not, if it's complete, if it's sharp, if it's round, if it goes in circles, if it's very high. If it's like flames of fire, if it's like water, if it's like earth, if it's like the wind, you can, you can see the nature of the person. 
What does it mean, the nature of the person? The normal value of the word nature is like God, is Elohim. Hateva, it's Elohim. So you can see his connection to the Creator if he's connected to the Creator by that foundation or by that foundation, by the ground or by the earth or by the fire or by the water. Who are you? You can tell. And especially, you can see your connection to the Creator from your flesh and bones, from your body, from your being, from who that you are. Look at yourself. That's, that's how you are attached to the Creator. That's how the Creator reveals Himself through you in His world. You are the Creator. You are the Creator's face. When Moshe Rabbeinu went down from Mount Sinai and people looked at him, they were terrified. Why? Because they saw the light of Hashem in his face. They couldn't stare. They couldn't look at him. They couldn't approach. They couldn't come, couldn't talk. Why? Because he was seeing the face of Hashem. So when he came down, after accepting the face of the Creator, he was shining. He was illuminating. There were beams of light all over his face, like the sun. And it's in your power to become exactly like that. And I know you don't believe me. I know, that's the problem. You don't have faith in Chachamim. You don't listen to the wise people that are telling you the truth of your creation. You're not listening. This is why Emunat Chachamim depends in the ears. Talui be'udnin. You're not listening to the voice of Chachamim. If you think I'm wise, so you need to believe me. So you need to listen. You need to take that message and to change. And to believe that you can become exactly like Moshe Rabbeinu, like Yosef HaTzadik, like Yaakov. Why do you think that it happened to Yosef HaTzadik? Because he was the son of Yaakov? No, it didn't happen to Yuda the same. It didn't happen to Shimon. It didn't happen to Levi. It didn't happen to, to Zvulun, to Issachar. No, everyone took something. But not everyone took what that Yosef took. No, Yosef took what that Yosef took. It was depends on Yosef. If I sat with another 150 Avrechim in the same kollel, in the same yeshiva, in front of our rabbi, so you think that we all took the same from the class? No way. Not at all. Not at all. Why every night when I'm asleep, I have another 20, between 20 to 50 subscribers when I'm asleep? I'm going to ask you. Another between 20 to 50 followers, new people that I never met in my life, that they decided that their heart woke them up to follow my classes. I'm asleep. I'm asleep. I finished eating my chulent. I drank another cup of coffee. And I went to sleep. That's it. I davened my rib already. I said Kriachma. That's it. Now I'm dreaming. I'm in California, dreaming. That's it. With Alice in Wonderland, walking, a big rabbit, a small rabbit, a big watch, a small watch, a cup of tea, with cookies, without cookies. I'm sleeping, flying with Dumbo. And 20 people, 30 people, another person wakes up. Wow, what's going on? I have to follow that person. Why? I need to walk with him at night. Why? I must let, listen to those classes. Oh, the shareable cl classes, the short ones. Oh, this translation in Spanish. Wow, I must listen. Oh, you have classes in German. Wow, in Russian. Wow, I must, I must. What's going on? What's happening? How can it be that someone is working for you when you're asleep? Because when you choose to wake up, and when you choose not to sleep, so you're awake also when you're asleep. Because your soul is keep on working, and your soul is keep on praying. Once there was a student of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev that came to him and asked him some questions. So Rabbeinu told him, tell me please, how was your sleep, your night sleep? He didn't know what to say. Good, not good, Baruch Hashem, thank God. 
So Rabbeinu looked at him and told him, you should know that tonight when I was asleep, I was asleep on that aspect of left-handed person. Means that he was working, thinking, making some prayers, learning some Torah, understanding new understandings, bringing down Chidush Torah, new wisdoms down to the world. On that topic that calls left-handed, the person that he's left-handed, great. That's how Rabbeinu is asleep. He's not asleep. He never goes to sleep. He never says to himself, okay, that's it. It was such a long day. I want to forget about it. No, no, no. His heart is awake. Ani er. I'm asleep, but my heart is awake. Awake because you cannot go to sleep when your brothers and sisters are still suffering in the depths of the exile. How can you sleep? You cannot hear the screams. You cannot hear the screamings of the souls. That's why you're asleep. So a person that cannot hear those screamings during the day, he's asleep. He sleeps during the day. He's eating and sleeping. He's learning Mara and he's sleeping. But the souls are screaming from the depths of the exile. Save me, save me. Can you be in touch with me? Can you shine to me? Can you smile to me? Can you talk to me? Can you see me? Can you tell me how I'm important? Can you please cheer me up? Can you take me out of those swamps of death, swamps of hell? Can you please take me out? Can you redeem me? Can you give me a hand? <coughs> and if you don't hear that scream, so you're deaf. You can't hear. But the souls are screaming. And what you need to do when you hear someone scream, you close the book, you move everything to the sides, and you just go and save him. You just go and do whatever you know that Hashem wants you to do. And you do as much as you can. And if you walk in the street and you see a homeless that he's hungry, now what you're going to do? Oh, Hashem, please feed the poor. No. No. Maybe also, maybe by the way, but first of all, you look where's your wallet, how much money you have in your pockets. And you don't need to look for the pocket with the change. You need to think with yourself, okay, how much I can give, how much I can, I'm able to give. That's what you need to do. First thing you need to do. No, Hashem is Zan, Mfarnes Lakol, He supplies and He gives and don't worry. Yeah, Hashem is with you. Come, go to it, go to it, tell Him. Hashem is with you, don't worry. Yes, go. Go with your new pair of boots, new sunglasses, with your iPhone, with in $500, $1,000 iPhone. Tell Him, Akole Tova, brother, it's all for the best. God is with you, bro. That's not what you do when you see a homeless, when you see a hungry person. That's not what you do. You need to slice from your own bread to the poor. And you need to give it to the poor. And you need to feed the poor. And you need to support the poor. And you need to have Rahmanut, mercy. And if you don't have mercy, it means that no one can see God through you. That's the answer. If you don't reveal the mercy of the Creator so no one can see, you're so blocked, you're so dark. That no one can see the Creator through you. And if you gave Him charity, and if you brought Him somewhere, and if you helped Him, so what happened? You just probably nullified yourself to the Creator, and the light of the Creator went through you. It wasn't you now to be rewarded, and prizes, and Emmy, and Nobel prizes. Oh, you don't know. Who are you? Piece of junk, who are you? In two days, the worms can eat you underground. What are you talking about? It can happen in five hours if Hashem will want. It can happen now. Do you have something of your own? Except of your arrogance? Instead of, except of that stupidity? Of thinking that you are something special? Who the hell are you? What are you? Piece of junk. What are you? Who you think you are? You're a piece of junk. That's who you are. And the light of the Creator can go through you and cancel your physicality and shine. And it's going to be only the Creator. His light will shine through you if 
you will get rid of all of your nonsense. That's it. To nullify yourself to the Creator means to throw away all of the junk. I think I'd rather to eat chicken today. What are you, a chicken? What are you, a fox? You're a leopard? You're a tiger? You're a wolf? What are you thinking? Why won't you think what she wants to eat when she's asking you what you want to eat? My wife told me so many times, I can never know what you want to eat. Because you always try to think what I want to eat. It's true. Who cares what I'm going to eat? I'm going to eat some crackers. It's okay. What do I need? I think I'm going to take that. Yuck, ich, it's disgusting. Shulchanot malu it's all, it's all vomit. It's all waste. What are you eating? What's that? Oh, the barbecue sauce is delicious. No, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. There is nothing in it. Oh, you look for Hashem? Great, you can find Hashem everywhere. In dry crackers, dry as wood, you can find Hashem. Trust me. Trust me. Some Holocaust survivor said that Auschwitz, the camp, was the cleanest place in the world. You couldn't even find a piece of paper over there. Why? Piece of paper. Why? He said because if a person would see a piece of paper, for sure he would put it into his mouth. They would eat paper. There was no food. There was no garbage. They would eat everything when you're hungry, when you need to feed your body. <laughs> you don't look to the sides. You just grab something that is edible and you finish the story. This is why on, on soap it's written, not edible. Because if you're thirsty in the shower, you can uh, mistake. And uh, What is all of those desires and lusts? And I know I prefer this. No, I like that. And the worst is in Shiduchim, looking for the right Shiduch. Which kind of animal you are? Which kind of animal you are? Looking for a fine Shiduch, for a good Shiduch. Are you sick in your mind? What the hell are you talking about? You need to look to the souls, to look for someone cute, someone nice, someone that smiles from inside, someone that wants to be happy. That's a good shidduch. Finish. No more conversations. She's smiling. She's happy. She wants to live. That's it. Now let's go and live together. No, you don't know. I went through things. I'm from this family, that family. No, I will tshuva, money, go to work. You're looking for a maid, you're looking for a cook, you're looking for a slave. What are you looking for? If you stand in front of the mirror and you tell yourself, okay, I want to marry the best cook in the world, I want her to be the most beautiful woman in the world, I want her to be rich, great. If that's your truth, okay, great, go do that, no problem. Deal with reality. If you say to yourself, no, I want to marry a good shidduch, who the hell are you to have a good shidduch? Who do you think you are? Are you beautiful and rich and nice and polite with good intentions and you like to wash the floor and to make food? That's you? If that's you, so look some, for someone like you, great. But if it would be really you, so you wouldn't care to help and to give to someone else. If really, really you were such an awesome person, so why you need to marry an awesome person? Marry some poor woman and help her and save her life. Rabbi Yosef Schwartz, the person that I told you about, the righteous man that saved the, the, the prostitutes from the central station in Tel Aviv, you know how he got married, Rabbi Yosef Schwartz's married story. He was volunteering in a hospital. He wasn't volunteering, he was just coming every day to the hospital to help people, sick people. And one day he walked and he hears a girl that cries. She was 17 years old. And she couldn't walk, and, she hear, he, and he hears her crying in the room. And he went into the room, and he sees a poor woman, poor girl, that is not able to stand on her legs, lying in bed, and she's crying. And her father, he was blind, sitting on a chair close to her. And that's it. She had only her blind father, and now she cannot walk. That's their catastrophe of their life. That's their life situation. And he's coming and talking to them, what's going on, how can I help, what happened? And she's crying and mourning on her sorrow, on her pain. I cannot walk, and who will take care of my father? And my father, he cannot see. Rabbi Yosef Schwartz, 
the solution to the problem. Here I am. What's the problem? She said just now, who are going to marry me? He said, what's the problem? I'm going to marry you. But my father, he won't be able to see the wedding. He told him, don't worry. I promise to you that in the, mar in the wedding of your daughter, she will stand on her legs and you will see. And they got married. And he married her. And he was the best husband in the world. And he helped her all of his life. And in her wedding, in their wedding, she was standing on her legs and her father saw the wedding. And he was blind. But in the wedding, wedding he saw. Why? Oh, Rabbi Yosef Schwartz. You know why Rabbi Yosef Schwartz was Rabbi Yosef Schwartz? Because Rabbi Yosef Schwartz had a heart. And you know why you not making miracles like Yosef Schwartz? Because you think that the chicken with the barbecue sauce is much better than the nah, turkey. No, not today. I'm going to take the, how you call it? Duck with orange sauce, right? There is a special? Duck, l'orange. Okay. Thank God. Duck la orange. <laughs> That's what he meant to say. It goes in the same way to the toilet. Shh. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? What the hell are we talking about? What's going on with the world? The world is dark. What do you want to do with your life? That's the question. What do you want to do with your life? Who you want to be? That's the question. That's the only question that there is in the world. Who you want to be? You want to be a chef? Who you want to be? You want to be a genius? You want to be called Talmid Chacham? You want to be righteous? Who? What do you, which title do you want? What do you think that will protect you in Judgment Day? I'm asking you. What do you think that will protect you in Judgment Day? Except of the truth. Because the truth will be heard. And you won't be able to hide. In Judgment Day, no one can hide. The truth will wash the reality of your life. That's it. A person that, fell, that went through a clinical death and he went to heaven to court and suddenly he sees his rabbi grandfather that was a very righteous man and he's running toward him scared, afraid. And he's telling him, Grandpa, please protect me. And that person looks at him and tells him, there is no grandpa in the world to come. Only the truth. You can't hide behind the back of your parents, of your rabbis. Who will protect your rabbis? Who do you think that will protect your rabbis in Judgment Day? Except of their good actions. And if they messed up? I heard an horrific, read it yesterday night, a frightening, terrifying story. Yesterday night on the Shla Kadosh. The Shla Kadosh was one of the biggest, biggest righteous people of all generations. He was huge. We're talking about an angel on earth. We're not, not talking about a regular common person. We're talking about a unique, special, clean, generous person that not asleep, that, that gives everything, that his house is open, that he sits and learns Torah and teaching Torah and Misirut Nefesh, that he is raising orphans in his house, that he's making weddings on his account, that he's taking care of everything, every single thing in his city, in his town. He's making sure that people sleep at night and they have blankets. We're talking about a righteous man, a clean righteous man. The Shla Kadosh. People called him the Shla Kadosh. The Holy Shla. Shla is the uh, first letters of his name. People called him the Holy Man. Aisha Kadosh. <laughs> and in one of the days that he invited many guests to his house, some silverware, uh, silverware, silver, yes, yeah, silver, disappeared from the house. 
And all of the students and the helpers start checking what's going on, where the silverware, what's going on, checking, looking, and they found some avrech, young guy, that they suspected that it's him. They went to the Rebbe, to the Shlach Kadosh, and now they're asking him permission to invite him for an a, a, a investigation, to check with him. So the Shlach Kadosh said, no way, that person for sure, he never, he never did it. There's no way in the world that he stole the, the, my silverware. For sure, he never, he didn't took night lashonara. He never heard. He wasn't ready to accept it. For no way, for no reason. But those people, the helpers, they went and they start investigating and asking. And it, 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 it was seems like it been clarified slowly, slowly that he's the thief. And they caught him and they brought him to the Shlakadosh. And the Shlakadosh was very surprised. He couldn't believe. And he asked him, please tell me. And there were a few people over there in the room. And he asked him, please tell me the truth. Did you took those silver words? So he said, yes. And he took it out of his jacket and gave it back to the Shlakadosh. And the story finished. He hadn't been punished. Nothing happened. Just he went through that shame. That person couldn't handle the shame of all of his friends and his rabbi and all of the community over there. You know, people have mouth in the, in the size of hell and bigger. People talk and that's it. And he went and started falling and he didn't feel comfortable to come again to the yeshiva. And he went off the way, went off the derech. And he went from one town to the other and he joined some merchants and started working and he was a very sharp guy, very wise person and he made very well in business and then he sailed one day and he, he went off the derech. He stopped keeping Shabbat, he started behaving like, like a non-Jew, he was out of the way. And in one of the days they, uh, he, he moved to Israel, to the land of Israel and they appointed him because he was a very successful uh, business rich wealthy man to be the governor of the city of Yafo <coughs> and he became to be Rosh Ha'ir, the how you say Rosh Ha'ir? Mayor of, of Yafo. That, that is a huge job, wonderful. In one of the days the Shlach Kadosh, after a few years the Shlach Kadosh decided to move to Israel, to go and live in, in Jerusalem, to go to visit the holy places and to, and to come to Jerusalem. So he went on a boat, he sailed to, to, to the land of Israel, and the, the, the port is, was in those days was in Yafo. In the moment that he put his feet, the Shlakadosh, on the port in Yafo, people came to him, messengers from the mayor's um, office, the mayor, he wants to meet you. Of course, you cannot refuse to a big person, the mayor, everything is good and great and wonderful. And he's going with a lot of honor, a lot of helpers, everyone carrying his suitcases and everything, his bags, and taking him to the place, to the house of the mayor. Great, and he's coming in, and he's shaking the hand of the mayor, and he cannot recognize him. The Shlach Kadosh didn't recognize that guy, that it was that guy. And they're going into the office, and they're entering into his house, into the living room, and whatever, and getting inside. And the, the mayor... Is, uh, is, is looking at him and shaking his hand, telling him Shalom Aulechem, welcome, walking with him and telling him, please, can I meet with you private? Can we please uh, have a, a small conversation? So the Shlach of course, no problem. Go with him to another room and that person lock the door and takes a knife out of his jacket and put it into the th on the throat, threatening his life. Of, of the Shlach Kadosh, telling him, let's go, quietly. And he's taking him down to the basement, to some dungeon underground, telling him, now lie on the floor that I will slaughter you alive. And the Shlach Kadosh doesn't understand what's going on. And he's telling him, please, why are you doing that? So he tells him, listen, you have a few more couple of minutes to do your confession before I kill you. And I promise to you that I'm going to slaughter you. So rush the confession if you want to say a confession before your death. And the Shlach Kadosh doesn't know what to do. He's a weak person, an old person. He cannot fight with that mare. And, and that's it. 
it's done. So he started doing tshuvot and he's crying to Hashem Yidbarach, please save me, please protect me. And he doesn't know what, there's nothing to do. And he finished doing confession, he says, I finish. So that person tells him, okay, now lie on the ground, close your eyes, take your head up, show, show me your neck that I'm going to slaughter you. And he comes and that's it. He's holding him and he's putting the knife and tells him, okay, now close your eyes and say Shema Israel. And the Shlach Kadosh is saying Shema Israel, and he's screaming, Shema Israel, Hashem Elkeinu, Hashem Echad. And that's it. And the mayor put the knife and told him everything's okay. Now you can go. So the Shlach Kadosh was terrified. He was sure that he's going to be, you know, executed. And he asked him, why are you, why, what are you doing? Why you did it? So he told him, listen, you... In, in heaven, you're a very important person. You're 99.9 .9 clean. You have only one sin that you sinned with me. Even though that you're an amazing rabbi and an amazing person, and you gave me so much in my life, but you took out the silverware out of my jacket in public. And you humiliated me in public. And because of that shame, I went off the derech. And I suffered from poverty. And it, it's like that you killed me. For you, it's a huge sin, what that you did to me. So you were obligated to die. You were supposed to die. That was your punishment that you deserved. Because you're so righteous and so clean, and you messed up so bad with me. So you need to die. And I really appreciate you and all of the good that you did to me. So I just helped you to clean yourself completely. And now you can go to Jerusalem and to live long life and all of your prayers will be accepted. So look what Hashem in Barach is doing with the righteous people to clean them. Look what HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Creator, is doing with every person to bring him to the final moment of his life clean and pure and holy. What that you're going through in your life, it's only to purify you, to bring you to humility, that you will surrender completely in front of the Creator, that your faith will be pure, that you will be humble, that you will be kind, that you will be polite. Humble, that's one word that contains everything here, that you will be humble, that you will crown Hashem, that you will see the beauty of His creations, of the creation itself, that you will have respect and appreciation to the wise people, that you're going to listen to their advice, that you're going to follow their advice, that you will be humble. That's the truth. Moshe, that he was a man of God, he was a man of truth, he was the most humble person in the world. You want to be a person of truth? Work on your humility. Crown Hashem on every situation. Give the power to the real righteous people. Believe in the purity of your own soul. And don't worship your body, your desires and your lusts. Don't make yourself important. Just be a holy person. Be who that you are. Let your soul shine from inside. Thank you very much. That's it. Be good.